Hello, welcome to this video on network automation tools. So who am I? Uh, my name is Roger Perkin. Um, I am CCIE number 50,038. I'm 18 years in IT. Um, I'm based in the UK and I'm currently working as a network and security consultant. And if you want to find out any more about me, my website is www.rogerperkin.com. .co.uk and I'll drop a link to that in the description for this video. So if you are into network automation and network programmability then please check out this YouTube channel. Um, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos um, and I make these about once a week. And in today's video we're going to talk about network automation tools. Now the world of network automation and network engineering is changing at a rapid pace. Our network automation tools are now becoming an essential to the operation of large and small networks. Uh, this network automation tools list includes tools like Ansible, SaltStack, Chef, Jenkins and Puppet. Um, also be covering Git, um, GitHub and Python. Um, the list is growing continuously. Um, but I would say at this moment in time in, for the world of network automation that Ansible and Python stroke Nornia are the ones out in front. Um, but I'm just going to step through each one as I've seen them in my workplace and give you a brief description of what they do um, so you can make an informed decision on if you want to check them out or use them for something to do at work. So, number one on the list is Ansible. Now, Ansible is an open source automation platform. Uh, which was purchased by Red Hat back in October 2015. Um, it was and still is used heavily by the server admin community to administer and deploy updates and patches to Linux. Um, but in the past few years, it's gained a great following from the network community who are now using it to administer and automate network operations across a wide variety of platforms. Now, Ansible is written in Python. Um, but you don't actually need to know any Python to use Ansible. All the playbooks are written in YAML. Um, let's just step through a few of the benefits here. It is agentless, which means you do not need to install anything on the remote node. Um, it only requires SSH to talk uh, to those network devices. There is a large community um, out there that will provide you endless support on any Ansible issues. Um, it is a rapidly um, improving product with new releases out very regularly, so you need to keep on top of it and what it's doing. There are lots of network modules. There is now pretty much a network module for pretty much any task and pretty much any vendor that you want to do. Um, and if there isn't one, um, I'm sure you can find one and you can even write the modules yourself. But for 95% of use cases for what I've used Antible for, there is always a network module that you can use um, to make your life a lot easier. And as I mentioned before, it is open source, so Ansible is free, free to use. Now the next tool, still on the Ansible theme, is Ansible Tower. Um, so Ansible Tower is the GUI front end for Ansible. Now it is technically a, another product uh, which still relies on the Ansible core underlay, but it does give you a completely GUI front end and gives you a lot more control on how you operate Ansible. So with the Ansible core, you are driving everything from the command line, um, but there is no real control on who can access your playbooks, who can run them. Uh, there's no logging of what has been run. Um, and what's failed, whereas with Ansible Tower, you've got complete um, visibility of every playbook that's been run, who's run it, whether it failed, um, a capture of all the output of every run, um, and there's so much where you can give access to groups of users to run certain playbooks. Um, all the security is built in, you can hide all the passwords for the devices, um, and only give people access to be able to run the playbooks. So it is a much more, uh, enterprise ready sort of tool that people are using. Um, it is a paid product. Um, you can get a trial version for Ansible Tower which will let you um, automate 10 nodes for free. 
and as I said before it just gives a lot more granular control on how you run Ansible um, and if you're not into paying for things there is an open source version which is called Ansible AWX um, which you can automate um, unlimited amounts of devices with so that is Ansible Tower um, a few other products on the list here Puppet is one of the other tools which again has been used by the server community a lot um, it's written in Ruby um, its main function is configuration management um, and the main difference between Puppet and Ansible is that Puppet does require an agent uh, to be installed on the target device it's written in Ruby which is another language that you probably need to learn a bit of to run Puppet and it does require an agent um, Cisco Nexus switches, the newer ones, can take that agent. And one of the big benefits of Puppet is that Puppet nodes pull information from the Puppet Master. So this is the the big difference in the Puppet um, sort of ecosystem, whereas you're defining a master configuration and then your devices are checking in with that master server each time um, to verify that the configuration they've got matches your master configuration whereas the Ansible model is a push model so Ansible is defining blocks of code and pushing it to the device so these are the, the differences in these tools um, Puppet does run its own language and Ansible is configured with YAML Chef, another tool on the list, same kind of thing it does also require an agent um, Chef's config does revolve around Git. Um, it's based on Ruby again. Um, some of the Junos devices supports the Chef agent. Um, SaltStack is another one. So there is a lot of products. They're all open source. They're all free. Um, again, all utilizing the mythology of a defined config and the agents checking in. Uh, salt stack uh, uses what they call a master minion topology uh, the master is a controller um, there is also a function called proxy minions that enable salt to control devices that cannot run the standard salt minion uh, some network devices can benefit from this and there is currently a collaboration between uh, napalm and salt um, called napalm salt um, and using salt as the automation framework so a lot of tools out there and again salt does require an agent and some of the nexus devices support that salt uh, agent on there so another very popular tool um, which is gaining a lot of traction is jenkins um, this is used for continuous integration uh, continuous deployment ci cd uh, you may have heard that term basically you can have your code um, in a git repository and any changes to that code in the git repository will be monitored by Jenkins and then Jenkins will take uh, that code and initiate a playbook run so keeping everything moving and continuously deploying on your network um, still not really taken up um, big time but it's it in use um, and one of the best things about Jenkins is it, it does have the best logo uh, which is what I like. Um, Git and GitHub. Now these are two of the most used tools for version control. Um, so Git is actually installed locally on your Linux host um, and anything you're tracking, any code changes, any playbook changes, um, you can version control the code of your network devices um, and locally you use git to do this so that's what you use to version control your code on your local device and then if you want to share that and let others view it uh, you need to use github which is a website where you can define your repositories and upload your code and collaborate with other users now number seven on my list of network automation tools is python um, now you might say that Python is not an automation tool Python is a language um, but to be honest Python is the best network automation tool there is um, it is so configurable you can make it do whatever you want it to do 
Um, you obviously need to learn Python and be a bit of a programmer within Python, but once you've got some basics under your belt, um, you will begin to appreciate the amazing power that just having some Python knowledge will be as a network engineer. Um, some of you might have heard of Nornir, um, which is another automation tool which is following on in the footsteps of Ansible, but it is more of a hardcore Python base um, and does give you a lot more knobs and whistles to, to turn um, and gives you a lot more control over what you want to do. Um, there are other tools, plenty of other tools out there, so just to go through a few of them, uh, Cisco NSO is the Network Services Orchestrator. Um, it is free to use for non-production networks. You can download a trial from Cisco. Um, it again is another tool to provide a one-stop point-and-click sort of place where you can configure your network. NetIce is another one which is trying to simplify um, the world of network automation and NetIce as trying to get people to use it with the logo of you don't need to learn any code. Um, so they're trying to automate all devices without knowing any code. Um, it is a great little tool. Again, you can get a free open source um, version of this to play around with. Um, and the other one, probably Nornia, is, a, is mentioned before, Python-based um, upgrade to Ansible. Really, really flexible, really, really powerful. Now, another little tool is called Genie. Uh, you need to look these all up. This one is really handy um, just for doing some basic checks, basic looks over your network, um, and the list does go on and on and on. So there is a complete whistle-stop tour of all the current network automation tools in use today, um, August 2019. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have got other tools that you use. So please, I would appreciate if you want to drop a comment in the box below. Just put down the any tools you use, whether you agree with this list, whether you think there should be others in there, um, whether you use Nornia, whether you use Ansible. Great to hear your comments on what you think. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of all the new videos that I upload. So my name is Roger Perkin, thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.